Yeah, good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted full though, right? Because I had it trimmed, I don't know, before I started the project, she trimmed it too far. I don't like that. To trim it too far, like, meaning like, like lined it, right? You're talking about yeah, lined. Yeah, yeah, okay, like okay. So, so now, okay, let's go over the terminology. So whenever okay. you go somewhere, you can kind of let them know okay. this is what you're talking about. Like, I want to keep that width wide, so when you line me, make sure that you're keeping me wide. When you bring me down, when you bring my beard down, then you could take some down a little bit more. I'm fine with you blending it a little more. You get what I'm saying? So you use these type of words, and the barbers, they'll understand that a little bit better. And I know it's kind of hard explaining something that's not your field, so that's going to help you to be able to explain that a little better. So I want my width. Like you can think of that, like my width to be wider. So and so make my line wider and then my blend to be you can make that sharp if you want to. Alright. Now Rafael, you live in the city? No, I live in McDonough. So right here what I'm doing is blending. So I start from the skin up with no guard on. And I blend. And then I don't worry about it too much because you're gonna go back over it once you have the hair shampooed. I'm just kind of going over it a little bit so that I can just kind of have an outline of the haircut. So I have it all the way open now. And then I'm going to start my reverse fade. So just a minute ago I was fading up. Now I'm going to fade down. And I'll show, it, show you what I mean by that. What you do is you take, so now I'm going up. Instead of going down with the, guard, with the blade all the way open, I'm going to start slowly closing it. So I like to go halfway open. And then I knock out this middle line right here. Now we have this line right here. So you're going to use it all the way close and you're gonna go ahead and knock out that line. You can do it using the side. The side helps a lot because it helps you not to put a, another line in, so you're blending it. Okay, now it's closed all the way, and I'm really starting to get that line out. Now, this is where I'm going to stop at because, again, I don't want to take too much time because once you put a line here, it's going to show you where there's different lines that you can go through and just kind of dig at them. If you're like me and you're just not good with remembering the 45 degree, 90 degree, you can use the, the shape of the head to get that understanding as a ruler. So you want to go like this to his ear catty corner to his ear and his eyebrows. So his eyebrows right here, you always want to leave that line right there. And then from here, that's where you can take the blend. So have it, I took it from one to halfway close, uh, well, all the way close to halfway close to all the way open. And this blend is gonna be pretty nice because you have a little bit more skin to work with right here. So that's gonna show a lot of contrast when you're doing this dark part. You want some skin showing. So I'm just gonna do the same thing to this side. Reverse blending, it seems to be the easiest because it really does help you not to, especially if you're new with fading, you want to be able to fade without taking it too far up and messing that up. I, I've heard people say it's hard to do a tint fade or whatever the case may be, especially when they have a lot of hair, but it really isn't. It's just all about finding a starting point and then blending down so then you know you're not going too far up. So you take the way that you do that is take the highest number that you're going to use and use that first instead of so you can start the lowest, which would be no guard, then the highest guard which will be the one guard and you go and you you create where you want the you know the fade to be you want to do light strokes so 
you gotta dig me into the skin like that. Sorry if that hurts you. What you wanna do is you wanna lightly stroke the hair. Go with the brain. That's a little trick with the zero bar. You wanna open him up and get him ready to be shampooed because you gotta know when to say, okay, let, I'm overworking now. Let me go ahead and shampoo him because when his hair is clean, the hair is gonna fall off like paper. It's gonna go shh. <laughs> When I shampoo, I'm not using my nails because that would hurt him. So if you don't have nails, that's pretty cool because you can really get to the balls of your fingers pretty well. So we have the conditioner. We're gonna put this on. This is amazing because you'll see it has tea tree and peppermint. It's uh, stimulating for your hair. And this is very important. We wanna create a healthy environment for the scalp. to line him up in the back, the nape of his area, uh, the nape area. Then we're gonna also line up his uh, temples and the front hairline. So we're gonna line that stuff up first. Nothing like when you start seeing the cut come together. Off. I don't know if you can feel this, but it feels really soft right here. Right on time, the scene just ended. So now I don't want to put the balm on yet, just because I want to really get a good trim on his beard. The reason why I like using the shears is to give you more of a softer blend. The clippers are cool, but I like the shears. dryness or it can have something to do with needing a trim. So I'm going to put the My Hair Repair Serum on his hair before we let him out the chair because his beard is nicely polished and his cut is complete. 